in Australia stop the boats? I wanted to know more. I was living in Jakarta, so I drove up to Chisarua, the staging post for boats that were going to Christmas Island. I wanted to meet the refugees. I wanted to know who were they? Where did they come from? And what were they going to do now? Almost immediately, I met Mazafa and Hadim. Hadim was 17 years old, and he'd been filming his friends and flatmates on his mobile. Mazafa, he was a photographer. We liked each other straight away, and that day, we decided to start making a film together. I'm Mazafar Ali. Uh, I am from Oruzgan province of Afghanistan. I joined United Nations Assistance Mission in Afghanistan as political uh, affairs assistant. It was a unique opportunity for me to work for the UN. Uh, we were able to go to some remote districts. I saw the culture and the poverty and different problems of the people and also the natural beauty of, uh, of uh, those villages and places. And it prompted me to uh, buy a camera and take those pictures. Uh, I'm now in Chisawa, Bogor, uh, in Indonesia, uh, with my wife, my daughter, my mother, sister and brother. Uh, we are uh, refugees, uh, recognized refugees, we got our status by UNHCR. Hi, my name is Fadim. I'm 18 years old and I'm a Hazara refugee living in Chisarwa outside of Jakarta. Since I was a child, I loved karate. I had a black belt and I was a national champion. But in Pakistan and Afghanistan, my people are persecuted by the Taliban. When a bomb went off near my school, killing 126 people, I decided that I had to leave. Like many other Hazaras, I am stuck here in Indonesia. I have a mobile phone and I have started to make a film about our lives. There's about 5,000 refugees in Chisarua. They arrive as asylum seekers. And they can stay, but they can't work or study. So they register with the UNHCR to get their refugee status. It takes 18 months just to get their first interview. If they're approved, they hope to get resettled in a third country, like Australia. And that can take up to 10 years. In the meantime, they live in uncertainty and wait for the phone call from the UNHCR. With Eid coming up, Mazafa Hadim and a few others decided to get the refugees together to break the monotony.
it is the middle of 2014 in Kisarwa. I have been here about 16 months. The families who are here are worried about their children's education. So we decided we must find a way to give the children a chance to study. We knew an Australian family in Jakarta who said they would pay the rent on his space. We had some meetings and failed, particularly among the women, that we had the expertise and experience to create a learning center. Many of us were very scared. But the education of the children was important, so we went ahead anyway. Everyone chipped in to buy a few supplies like a whiteboard and some carpet and notebooks. The day when everyone got together to clean, lay the carpet and hung the whiteboard was a special day. We realized that the learning center would not only be good for the children, but would also help create a sense of community among the refugees. We were doing something positive for ourselves. Uh, I was actually uh, living in Jakarta. I uh, came to know from my friend that, uh, yes, um, we are going to open a school, a community school. I say it's very good. I, I also want to teach here, and I also want to bring my children here. Then the next day I go when I bring my, all my stuff here, I, I rent a room, I rent a house, sorry, uh, for uh, 1200 And I, I stayed there, but I could not sleep because it was so dangerous, dark, and under... Uh, then the next day we moved to another house where I'm living now. Sometimes when they make too much noise, they call me Tahira, where are you? Come, they are making noise here. Yeah, I say, okay, I'm coming. I'm on my way. Then uh, I feel very proud. The knowledge that I'm having, the experience that I have, I want to share it. I want to give it to the others. My husband, uh, around uh, three years ago, he went missing uh, on a boat uh, towards Christmas Island. On 2012, uh, he called me that uh, he's leaving uh, Indonesia and he's uh, moving towards uh, Australia. But uh, after that, I could not, uh, I could not talk to him anymore. People say that, forget him. I cannot forget him. People say, my friend says, my relative says that, just go forward, leave him. Because they think that they might have drawn. I don't think so. When, that, when amazing things goes, it, it goes very fast, you know? I'm thinking sometimes that, when, I start, when we start this learning center, it goes now six months, you know? Now we are thinking about next year to, to raise money and rent the place. It goes very fast. I hope our resettlement process also goes fast, you know? <laughs> but the learning center, because it is amazing, you know, it very, goes very fast, very fast. In one month, like, we have many visitors. There were students, university students, different universities like Monash, RMIT, and from many universities they came and visit and we provided them as already a meal, you know, <laughs> they enjoyed. Uh, I'm surprised when one of his students said that I want to learn more about refugees. I said, okay, if you learn, you can stay here in with refugees, live with refugees. And she said that, oh, I have to ask my mother because she, we heard refugees are very dangerous. I said, I was laughing, you know. 
We are not dangerous. You see how incredible things are going here, how incredible people are here. She said, oh, I have to ask my mother because you are scary, you know? We are, we are scared from refugees. I was surprised because people are people doesn't know about refugees. But it is us who, who should educate them about refugees. Refugees are not not just book people or criminal or terrorists. They are they are very wonderful people, skillful people. Yeah. One day, I was on the way back from a visit to the school when Mazafa rang. He'd had the call from the Australian Embassy and they'd asked him to come in for an interview. Tears ran down my face. That first time I'd driven up the hill, that had just been on a whim, on an intellectual idea. Now I felt their happiness and their joy. They'd become far more than just grainy newspaper images or the background of news reports. They were, they were people, they were real people. They were my friends. I just hoped the interview would go well. I'm the fifth generation is refugee. I want to end this, this, this dilemma for my daughter. I want her to live without fear, to live as a free person, whatever she wants to do, she should be free. Want to play football, there should not be restriction for her. If she wants to go to somewhere else, there should not be some danger on the way. She should learn and get education and serve humanity. Really? Uh, yes. No. no. Yes. Where? Yes. Where? 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 It all depends on others. <laughs> refugees' world, refugees' life, refugees' future depends on others. You can't do anything, you don't have a choice. Thank you.